ipmnation.com. Canada is getting ready to legalize recreational marijuana. On October 17th, it will be legal for adults in Canada to possess, buy, use, and grow cannabis. But each province and territory is allowed to set its own rules around marijuana. So the minimum age to buy, the types of marijuana available, and how much people are allowed to have will vary. One concern with the new law is people driving while high. The government official who's overseeing legalization says the country's police officers have been given the, quote, training tools and technology to actually detect and deter impaired drivers. Canada approved the use of roadside screening devices to test for THC, one of the main ingredients in marijuana, and the government earmarked about $62 million to help police prepare, including training more officers to recognize drivers who've used drugs. But the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police says not enough officers have been trained. The goal was 2,000 trained drug recognition experts, but a Canadian news outlet reports only about 880 officers are trained and ready to go. For anyone in the U.S. wanting to pop up to Canada, to enjoy the new recreational marijuana law, be aware that bringing pot into or out of the country will still be illegal. And the U.S. Border Patrol will be on the lookout and people will reportedly be barred from entering the U.S. if they admit to pot use. Says who? Susan, you're cruising for a bruising. You're out of your mind Just wasting our time Says who? Susan You're so confusing You went with the guy Who told all those lies A Democrat girl Will take the place of you She's also named Susan Cause you voted for That walking liquor store We're thinking of you We'll replace you Says who? You're not a nice person. Only good treats. I don't care. I stand up here giving speeches for an hour and a half, many times without notes. No sequence starts. What is it? Uh, it's July 10th, 2018. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, no, it's October 10th, 2018. You're listening to Matt Connors and Unleashed in the Afternoon. We are live on WMNH 95.3 FM, emanating from a uh, hot and humid downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, streaming at WMNHradio.org. You can find WMNH on the TuneIn app as well. You can put that on your mobile device and take us anywhere you go, which is nice. Uh, especially if you're heading to the, you know, <laughs> heading to the beach, heading to uh, an outdoor barbecue, 
as opposed to an indoor barbecue. Uh, whatever you might be doing on this hot summer day. Uh, let's see. Of course, uh, you can also watch us on Channel 97 Comcast if you're in the Manchester area. And you can uh, enjoy the program on the Facebook that's what it was originally called, you know, the Facebook, and then it just became Facebook, on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. And that's one of the ways that you can communicate with us during the show. I already see Jenny in there. Hello. And uh, Derek Evan Relliford is in there. Hello, Derek. Of course, uh, you can also call us, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Uh, I've got the window open. It's, um, what is it, like 80-something degrees outside. Um Yes, enjoy it. It, it. It's nice to, you know, uh, summer is my favorite time of year, so I do love the summer weather. Now, in a decade from now, uh, when we can't uh, grow any crops for food, um, I might look back on this and, and think, you know, I probably shouldn't have enjoyed that quite so much. I should have been more concerned, uh, terrified even, and actually I am. But uh, but today, let's just enjoy this uh, who knows? Maybe tomorrow it'll be 90. Uh, it, it's it's very exciting, isn't it? Uh, Jenny is saying, how hot is it in the studio? Geez. Uh, here in the studio, it's about, uh, it's about uh, 600 degrees. Let's go with that. I, 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 I don't know. I'm probably exaggerating slightly. It's about 575 degrees. That's probably closer to the... Uh, I am sweating. Uh, you can't tell, uh, probably, if, if you're watching online, but... Uh, from that distance, but the uh, I am glistening with perspiration right now. That's how hot it is in here. I might have to, uh, you know, I wish I'd thought of it, actually. <laughs> you know, sometimes on a, on a hot day, I like to play uh, Weatherman Says uh, by the great Jack Wagner. Uh, maybe I'll play it uh, at the top of the hour when we go to a break. Um, that's a great song about the heat, Weatherman Says by Jack Wagner. Uh, Jack Wagner, of course... I will uh, continue to argue, as I always do, the greatest entertainer uh, in the history of the world. Uh, you know, I, I, and, and people argue with me about that. People will say, Jack Wagner, really? And I tell them, look, Jack Wagner portrayed Frisco Jones on General Hospital. Uh, the Luke and Laura era was coming to an end, and we needed a new hero. And that new hero came to us in the form of Jack Wagner. So uh, how dare you, those who would... Uh, would question that. Uh, Derek uh, is uh, asking, what's the temp? Uh, it's mid-80. Mid blah, 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 blah. It's so hot I can't talk. It's mid-80s. I think I'm having heat stroke right now. Um, I'm experiencing heat stroke live on the air. Uh, it's in the mid-80s here in, uh, in Manchester, New Hampshire. And uh, it's, uh, you know, almost middle of October. I mean, you know, some Indian summer is nice, but... Uh, like I said, this does make me concerned for the future. Now, yesterday here on the program, I was joined by the people's mayor, Glenn R.J. Willette, and he explained to me that this isn't technically Indian summer because apparently, and I didn't know this, apparently uh, Indian summer is defined as after you've had your first frost of the fall season, once you've had your first frost, if it then goes back to summer-like weather, that's Indian summer. This technically doesn't count because we haven't even had our first frost yet. That's how warm it's been, which I hadn't even considered, but that's true. I, 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 you know, even on, uh, I mean, there's, there's certainly been days it's been chilly. I mean, there's, there's been a, a night or two that it has gotten down in, into the 40s, but um, there has yet to be a day so far this season where I go outside in the morning and there's, uh, you know, frost on the windshield or anything like that. That that has not happened yet, and it is uh, almost mid-October. So uh, what did I say it was? Yeah, October 10th. It's it's hard to remember the, the date because it feels like it's July. And again, I, I, I like this. Uh, I like the heat. I just... Uh, but uh, I'm concerned. I brought it up yesterday on the show. There's that new report that says, yeah, we got about... Uh, 11 or 12 years left to uh, figure this whole thing out, um, which, let's be honest, isn't going to happen. I mean, you know, we have two major political parties in this country, and one of those political parties has successfully uh, convinced all its uh, constituents that uh, science isn't real. So, you know, 
uh, this is pretty much it. Let's let's go ahead and I mean I hate to be cynical, but uh, yes, I do believe the uh, it is the beginning of the end. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh not because I'm trying to be funny. I laugh so I don't cry because I'm actually completely serious. Uh, we are on our way to uh, destroying ourselves uh, through our own ignorance and stupidity. And uh, it's not going to be at the hands of nuclear weapons or chemical weapons or anything like that. It's going to be because uh, we have a uh, very large segment of the population who, uh, when told by their elected lawgivers and overlords uh, not to believe in science, uh, those same elected lawgivers and overlords, of course, who get uh, massive amounts of campaign donations from big oil, big coal, you know, big energy, the energy sector. Uh, So these people who are essentially being paid to make sure that we destroy the planet uh, tell you, don't worry, we're not actually destroying the planet. They're lying to you. You believe it. Oh, science. Who cares? Science. That's like sorcery. Uh, And then we just uh, go about destroying the planet. So, uh, yeah. So it is the beginning of the end. Uh, Let's enjoy the time we have left uh, because uh, it's over, kids. Uh, (laughs) And I'm I'm trying to be funny about it, but I'm actually completely serious. I'm I'm trying to be funny so I don't get uh, too upset. And I don't mean to be cynical, and I'm not, you know, and I, I'm an optimist by nature, but uh, no, if we, uh, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> nothing has changed. I mean, look, it, you know, Trump can go to a rally somewhere tonight and talk about how silly it is to care about the environment, and everybody will cheer and be like, yeah, stupid liberals caring about the environment. Uh, I don't even consider myself a liberal, but silly me, I do care about survival. Uh, I do care about uh, the planet not uh, cooking to the point where uh, we can't grow any crops. And even if we could grow any crops, all the bees are dead. Uh, so you can't pollinate anything anyway. Yeah, I actually care about that stuff. Silly me. I know. It's uh, it's crazy. Um, hello to uh, Ben Dion, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. Ben Dion, of course, uh, host of the, uh, of the weekly Dion, which you can hear Thursdays. At 6 p.m. live, immediately following this program. Uh, I also see uh, Christian Cunard in the Facebook live chat. She says, hi, Matt and Jenny. So anyway, um, nah, who knows? I mean, maybe, you know what? what's, uh, what's uh, funny is uh, there, there was a time. There actually was a time. I think it was during the, uh, might have been the late 90s, early 2000s when, uh, the uh, the one of the two major parties that actually uh, did uh, believe this was an issue, um, the other one, I mean, like both part, there there was a short time, like even Newt Gingrich of all people, there was a short time that both parties agreed uh, that this needs to be addressed. But now, what happens is because you know winter is coming, as hot as it is, winter is coming, and uh, you know anyone who's uh, who doesn't currently believe in science but is maybe open to the idea that science is real. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll turn on Fox news in the winter and they'll see Sean Hannity sitting there going, Hey, anybody notice it snowed today? Boy, I bet Al Gore feels pretty stupid right now. And then everybody who, uh, who, who maybe had been on the brink of actually believing in science will go, Oh yeah, it snowed today. Obviously, uh, it, it's all BS, uh, this uh, whole climate thing. It snowed in winter. Everything's fine. Uh, and we'll just go about, uh, ruining the planet and eventually we'll be extinct. So anyway, so thank Thank you, Sean Hannity. No, that really is what happens, though. Seriously, like because you know what, um, you know what the Republican Party did, and I'll give them a little bit of credit here. This was smart. So we used to call it global warming uh, back when when I was a kid, and we first started hearing and reading about this. It was called global warming. And then um, scientists who, and by the way, they're called scientists because they actually uh, study uh, science. Uh, you know, so I tend to defer to them on matters of science. I know to some of you, that's crazy. Why would you listen to those stupid scientists? What do they know? Actually, the reason we call them scientists is because they know something about science. Uh, so anyway, so I, I tend to defer to them on matters of science. So, uh, anyway, so scientists, uh, they, they stopped using the, uh, the term uh, global warming and started to call it climate change. What the Republicans did, which was sort of clever because people do fall for this so easily, is they started to 
um, just in the last few years, they started to refer to it as global warming. So while everyone else is calling it climate change, they started calling it global warming. The reason they did that, the reason they reverted back to the old term that we used to use back when I was a kid was because it's so much easier to say, oh, how can global warming be real? It's cold out today. Oh, so obviously it's all fake. And these stupid scientists, they don't know anything. Uh, It's all just a conspiracy, really. It's uh, scientists and uh, the world's liberals are just trying to destroy uh, capitalism. It's cold outside, so obviously global warming is fake, stupid scientists, right? So that's what they did. They, they Instead of calling it climate change, they went back to calling it global warming because they can't deny that there's such a thing as climate change because there clearly is climate change. It's 85 degrees in October. Yeah, sorry, climate change is real. I can prove it. But they can they can so easily deny that global warming is real, right? So they they reverted back to using the old term. Whenever you see these these Republicans with their talking points about how it's all fake, they don't call it climate change. They call it global warming. Because then, seriously, as soon as it snows, you'll be able to turn on Fox and Friends on any given morning, and you'll see Brian Kilme and Steve Douchey and the token blonde who sits in the middle, and they'll all be going, Ooh, can you believe people believe in global warming? There's a blizzard outside. Why are all these scientists so stupid? Don't they go to school to learn about science? How come they don't know anything about science? They're all dumb. I mean, we can plainly see it's snowing out. And then all the people watching Fox and Friends will go, yeah, that's right, those dumb scientists what do they know so anyway uh so uh to all those of you who don't believe in science uh thank you in advance uh for uh destroying uh humanity and uh all other uh life on earth i assume i mean cockroaches will survive obviously but because in theory they can survive anything right even uh, nuclear war so thank you all in advance uh thank you republican party thank you fox news uh thank you all and just in case i don't get to thank you when we're all dead uh, i'll I'll just go ahead and thank you now so that's great great job uh and uh you know another decade or so uh we'll be able to uh you know well uh, you know, i mean these old guys let's be honest these old white republicans in congress what do they care or in hatch what is he like 85 years old or in hatch doesn't give a crap right because why should he he's 85 years old uh, chuck grassley uh 85 i believe i i don't think he cares right they don't care and when you don't care uh, when you don't care, you don't care. It doesn't matter to you. Uh, whatever. You, you know, you just want to, you, you want to keep that money flowing in, right? And then, uh, you can just keep going about your, uh, destroying of planet Earth. I did not intend to spend, uh, the first, uh, 15 minutes of the program on that, but, uh, there it is. It just tumbled out of me. Um... And I've probably offended uh, a large portion of the audience because uh, people who don't believe in science don't like to be told that they're foolish for not believing in science. It's it's a weird thing. It's like, uh, what do you mean you don't believe in science? Uh, don't you think science is real? And they're like, oh, how dare you? So... <laughs> It's a, oh, what a strange world. We, I, I mean, we probably deserve to uh, destroy ourselves, <laughs> right? I mean, it, 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 in a way, in a way we deserve it, right? Because of our ignorance. Like, isn't it more fitting that we destroy ourselves than, say, some asteroid hits the Earth and we go the way of the dinosaurs? I, it probably is more appropriate, ultimately, that we destroy ourselves, right? Why not? <sighs> anyway... By the way, uh, if you enjoyed uh, that opening song, I, I sometimes I forget to give credit, and I, I do feel genuinely badly about that. Uh, the song Susan, that's by my favorite uh, YouTuber, Rocky Mountain Mike. That's his ode to uh, Susan Collins, the uh, Republican senator from the state of Maine, and her vote to confirm uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm worked up, but it actually feels like it's getting hotter in here. It really does feel like... Uh, Maybe I wasn't exaggerating when I said it's 600 degrees. I wonder what the weather is supposed to be like tomorrow. I haven't looked at the weather. Anybody know? Anywho, we should move on to some other things. I don't want to even think about this anymore. Oh, 
<laughs> Except we really can't get away from it, can we? Because there's this giant, super, ultra, mega... I'm trying to think of more... Uh, we'll just go with that. I think that's the uh, the meteor... That's a very difficult word to say. The meteorological term for uh, for a hurricane of this size. It's a super, ultra, mega hurricane uh, that is now uh, hitting Florida... And we'll probably destroy the entire state of Florida. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that affects uh, the Electoral College. And the, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. It's, it's gallows humor, my friends. Uh, Florida will survive. Uh, the, I mean, the panhandle, you know, part of it might be gone. But um, so anyway, but this is a giant uh, hurricane. And uh, this is one of those uh, things that scientists, you know, those people who know about science, claim that uh, these are the uh, effects of climate change, not global warming, climate change. Uh, you know, that thing that so many of us don't think is real. Um, well, interestingly enough, I'm going to sort of kind of, I really am sweating, like more than usual. It really is a thousand degrees in here. I've amended that. It's not 600 degrees. I know I said I was exaggerating. I actually lowballed it. It's about 1,000, maybe 1,200 degrees in here. That's okay. Um, Politico reports. Oh, actually, we have a call. We'll grab this. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed in the Afternoon. Who's this? Hey, Matt, Mike Doyle. Mike Doyle, how are you, sir? Good, how you been? I'm well, aside from um, sweating bullets in here. Well, not bullets, yeah, but... Uh, I heard that. Yes. I just turned you on to see what you were talking about, see what the subject was, and I missed the original rant of why you think everything's changing, but I wanted to... I, I'm, a, I'm a true believer in science myself, and I wanted you to know that if there's a study done by Columbia University. Mm-hmm. There's a couple scientists there that are, that, are, that are weather gurus. You know, they're nuts about it. Okay. And they've come up with the theory, like many others, that that the the, the Earth cools and trends in, in large amounts of years. Mm-hmm. And their theory is, to the best of their scientist, um, um, you know, knowledge and what they've found, what they've been able to uncover, every fourteen to fifteen hundred years, the Earth has a cooling process. And that goes on for somewhere between two and three hundred years. Okay. And then after that, it goes back into a slight warming trend. Mm-hmm. And they've been able to they've been able to follow this back thirty two thousand years. Okay. So you know that's that's some kind of you know scientific data that says they've found this rhythm. They call it a rhythm in the in the weather patterns. So I guess the the point is, and I've always believed this. I've heard three hundred. As far as on and off, you know, warming, cooling, warming, cooling, a lot of scientists say that. Mm -hmm. These two have said they think it's more than that. They think it's a heating trend for 1,100 years and then uh, 300 years of of cooling. Mm -hmm. And and, and it just keeps kind of going in that rhythm. They call it a rhythm. So you can read that. It's it's Columbia University, and I think the guy's name was Dr. Lamont. But the the theory is what, the, the 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 provoking conversation is those of you those of anybody not you but those of anybody who who says every you know taking a hundred year segment and saying hey over the last hundred years it's getting much hotter or it's getting much colder they don't know what they're talking about I mean I guess they do know what they're talking about that it is getting much hotter or colder but they're not following science which says. It's a much larger span than that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can't just pick 80 years. Oh, it's been a lot hotter the last 80 years. Well, that 80 years might be part of that 1,100 years of a natural and cooling period. But then the Earth writes itself in this rhythm and, and goes back to 300 years of a slight cooling period. So knowing the human body only lives, you know, 70, 80 years, 90 years, uh, it's tough for us to... It's tough to, for us to trend of what's going on over those hundreds of years, but scientists have done it. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. It, it is science. It's not, this isn't an opinion. Sure. This is, this is fact, you know, so. Well, I mean, it's all, it's all theory. I mean, to be fair, I, I mean, that's why we call it theory I, because it's really all, I mean, you know, I mean. Well, they don't call it theory. They call it, they've been able to track this. They've been able to go yeah. back and, and do the research over the last, 
so many years, you know, yeah. hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of years, well, and say during this during this period it was it was getting warm more. Then the the main reason they can tell this is by the ice in the in the um, in the um, Antarctica and, and the, the colder places, the polar regions, and the, you know when the ice breaks off. It, it travels down, especially in the Atlantic Ocean. It travels down to places like um, um, Western Western Europe, and then they're able to tell through those segments, uh, through the ice, what has happened over the last you know hundred, two hundred, three hundred years, based on those huh? those ices breaking off and what sediment is in it and what what kind of chemicals they find in it, et cetera, et cetera, from yeah. melting and cooling. And, how long they think it's been there? Well, I'll, so I don't know if you call it theory I'll, because they've they've done extensive research on this. I'll certainly but if you want to read about it. It's a Columbia couple of Columbia University um, climate experts. No, so I'll I'll, cer- I, I, I I'll tend, certainly I tend uh, to want to believe that that none well, of us really know what's happening. Well, I I, I want to believe that too. I mean, the, the the problem is, and I will check that out, Mike. Thank you because I'm very believe me. I want to be wrong. I mean, I but the the problem is so I'm also reading all this other stuff that says uh, that that contradicts that and says we're in trouble and we need to fix that. I want to believe, like I want to read that study you were just talking about and feel better. I believe me, I don't want to be right about this because I'm legitimately, you know, there's this new report. I don't know if you saw the report that came out that says we have ten to twelve years to to get this back on track or we're really going to have a problem. I, I I don't want that to be right. Uh, so right. I, so I I will check that out, Mike. And I'll. D- you said the doctor's name. What was it again? I can't remember. His name. I, I, can, I thought I, it was Lamont. L A M O T H E. But just, just Google Columbia University climate change. Okay, that's all you got to do, and it'll tell you the two doctors' names. Okay, and what they've found by scientific data. Yeah, that the that the Earth cools and warms. It seems to warm more than it cools. Mm-hmm. But it's always cyclical, and it has a way of when, once it warms too much over a period of a thousand years or eleven hundred years, then it goes into a cooling phase of three hundred years to try to right the ship, and then it, it naturally just kind of rights itself. And so, well, you know, this is a study they were able yeah. to find I hope data that reaches back, you know, tens of thousands of years, and I hope be able they're to right. Put this study together, so yeah, I hope they're right. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to tend to believe that too. I, I don't, I don't know. I just can't believe that somebody can tell over a ten year span. They go, oh, we got ten years left, or we're in trouble, or we're, you know what I mean? How, how do you know? I, I don't know what you're well, basing that on. Are you basing it on the the amount of hurricanes and stuff? Is that what you were thinking, or? Well, it's not my conclusion, but th- but this is based on, I mean, you know, the, the world's climatologists, uh, from what I understand, are generally in agreement that we really have a problem here. So there's a new study that was released. I mean, I don't get too into the weeds with it because I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm not even good at math, but I tend to, you know, just as I would defer to an auto mechanic, for example, with matters a- about a vehicle, or I would defer uh, to, an, a, a, you know, a, a tax accountant in in terms of filing my taxes i tend to defer to climatologists in terms of uh issues about the climate so if if the if the world's climatologists overwhelmingly are saying no this is real we're putting all this out into the atmosphere and it has an effect and it has a long-term effect if that's what they're saying i tend to believe them but if you have something that i can google and look up and and it's scientists who did this study uh, great, because I want to feel better. I am, I am legitimately worried, and uh, yeah. and I would love to feel I, better about it. I've read it more than one place. That a lot of a lot of people believe in the three hundred year theory. That's been out there for a long time. That it cools for three hundred, then it warms for three hundred. It cools for three hundred, then it warms for three hundred. So, again, being human, you know, and having a lifespan of eighty, ninety years, we never get to see the transition from you know, a period of 100 years to 100 years type thing, you know what I mean? And know that the past 100 years, you know, in the 1800s, you know, or, or 1900s, early 1900s, what was the weather like on average, you know? So mm. it, it's it's an interesting phenomenon because there's, there's quite a few angles out there. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, I tend to believe a lot of these scientists would say it's long cooling and heating trends. And right now we may be in one of those heating trends, and, you know, people are starting to panic and go, 
but at some point down the road, it might not be 100, 200 years from now, it'll start to cool again and, and right itself. And it's, it's really interesting because they find out a lot of this information through the ice. When it warms, it breaks off, and then it floats down into places where they can research it. And they, they get take the ice, and they find out inside of the ice different chemicals, different particles, uh, things they find in the ice and go, whoa, you know, that was from the 1800s or the 1600s and so on and so forth. So they can kind of get some variation of heating and cooling. So just, if you're looking for interesting reading and it's not long, Columbia University uh, climate change professor and and um, you'll see their studies, there's two of them, what they came up with. So I just wanted to add that in. All Great right, show. Mike. You would be the scientist of talk radio, that's all. Oh, my goodness. We're going to make you the scientist of talk radio. If uh, somebody wants to go to expert talk radio, go to Matt Connerton. All right. Sounds good to me, Dr. Connerton. All right. Later. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Mike. Take care. All right. Mike Doyle leaves us. That opens up a line for you, 603-250-6007. Uh, Kevin Buckley is in the Facebook live chat, and he says, uh, my brother is a climate scientist at Lamont Doherty Observatory at Columbia, and he is telling me that the guy who is talking has no idea what he is saying. All right, so uh, Mike Doyle has a uh, detractor there. Uh, Jenny has uh, entered the studio. This is a surprise. And uh, and she's got a fan. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to take a break and play something and plug in that fan uh, because uh, it is uh, terribly, terribly warm in here. I heard your cry for help. And Daniel, my wonderful driver, brought me here to bring you a fan. Well, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> All right. So I just have to. Well, you know, oh, this is perfect. You know what I'm going to play? This is uh, so there's these guys on uh, YouTube uh, called Parody Project. And some of the uh, some of the uh, political parodies that I play on the show are from these guys. Um, not all, I don't play all of them because they're kind of hit and miss, but I like this one. And it's appropriate to what we were just discussing. Uh, this is uh, called Environmentally Resigned. And then uh, I'm going to plug this fan in, and we'll be back. More Matt Connerton unleashed in the afternoon. It's knowing that the truth will have a cost that causes some people to fall. Makes them tend to leave their sleeping friends rolled up and stashed behind their couch. Or they sit and watch the corporate news controlled by those who profit from a system that pollutes both earth and mind. It keeps us on the back roads, cut off from the solutions, and we're left environmentally. It's knowing that the atmospheric CO2 affects the planet's climate With levels at the highest that they've been over the last few million years While it's true that we could fix it, being hand-bent to profit Seems to make it so we're always just in What use will all that money be when the planet can't sustain us and the Earth's environmentally resigned? They're clinging to some dead beliefs while rapid changes happen all around us. Believing something someone said that blames it on some faction they despise. It's just knowing that the world could be impacted with disaster Like an earthquake and a hurricane combined And that then it wouldn't indicate that something was amiss Cause they're environmentally resigned It makes some people mad to say humans could affect the course of nature Go ahead and check the comments that you'll find below this post and rest my case. How can we find solutions when the truth is being purposefully maligned? When things get to their worst, they'll still deny we caused it. It's just environmentally resigned. It's knowing that the truth will have a cost that causes some people to balk 
And makes them tend to leave their sleeping friends rolled up and stared behind their couch. Or they sit and watch the corporate news controlled by those who profit from a system that pollutes both earth and mind. It keeps us on the back roads, cut off from the solutions, and we're left environmentally resigned. There you go. That's environmentally resigned from uh, Parody Project. I, I, th- that song was shorter than I thought. We were paying attention, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I usually play something at the top of the show, but I wanted to uh, at the top of the hour. But I wanted to plug that fan and thank you. Yeah, you're it's, very uh, welcome. It's. Uh, I heard your cry. I, I yes. <laughs> I well, brought my own. You see, I saw, and, it, and yeah. it's and it's Pinktober, so. Well, in the summertime, I got like, my pink fan. Like you pointed out that in the summer the air conditioning is running in the building all day but uh this time of year obviously it's not right so. they're getting ready they're thinking they're gonna put the heat on not have 80 something degree weather i'm like floored by the weather just floored i haven't even looked at the forecast i don't know if it's supposed to stay this way i or? think like the whole eastern seaboard northeastern seaboard is like going having this little heat blast but it's gonna go away yeah because well, yeah. we got the hurricane coming up the coast it's battering florida right now yes pretty significantly yeah. there's a lot of damage even uh one of their television stations in the uh panhandle area i believe it was channel seven actually had to go off air they were they were broadcasting live. The roof came off their studio. Oh, my God. There's new construction houses down. There's extensive flooding, extensive damage. Um, thoughts and prayers going out to everybody down there going through this right now. And hopefully uh, everybody will be all right. And, you know, no. property can be fixed. People can't be replaced. So That's let's true. hope that everybody's all right. Um, Politico is reporting that uh, breaking taboo negative ads fly during the Florida hurricane. Uh, it says here, once in Florida, it had been considered taboo to, I didn't know this, to run negative campaign attack ads as a hurricane batters the state, but no more. As Hurricane Michael bore down today on the panhandle with Category 4 wins, the Republican Party of Florida broke with that tradition and continued to air two ads bashing Ron DeSantis' Democratic rival in the race for governor, Tallahassee Mayor Andrew Gillum, over his city's response to a hurricane in 2016. (laughs) And in the U.S. Senate race... Well, that's why they're doing it. It's timely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And in the U.S. Senate race, the Democratic super PAC backing Senator Bill Nelson, Democrat of Florida, obviously, began running a negative commercial in strike zone markets, calling his opponent, Governor Rick Scott, a dishonest, quote, shady millionaire who doesn't look out for you, unquote. Wow. Yeah. Nice thing to say about the governor in the middle of a massive state of emergency. They've got curfews at 6 p.m. I mean, they've they've they're. This is, they're saying, the worst storm that that area has had in a hundred years. Oh, yeah. And both sides of the aisle are doing this. See, this is this partisan junk that you and I both detest greatly. Oh, yeah. You know, could, they couldn't wait till the storm was over and stuff. You know, like, can we, like, take care of people and, and life before we start uh, bashing each other? Both of them. It says also in those markets, a Republican super PAC supporting Scott is attacking Nelson in an ad for being, quote, an empty suit. There's a major difference between the two uh, negative ads. The Senate campaigns have no say over the super PAC ads, can't coordinate with the group under federal law. Of course, we all know that goes on anyway through back channels. And Nelson's campaign said no one should be posting negative ads in the counties affected by Michael. DeSantis's campaign, however, is governed by state law and works side by side with the state GOP with its attack ad. Well, obviously, those the, though there's no law against it. It's just... It's uh, always been just respect. Yeah. You know, people are struggling right now. Homes are being destroyed. People are at risk. Hospitals are evacuating. I mean, come on. It's just... Yeah. It's it's a courtesy thing, you know? Right. You know, that'd be like attacking, throwing an attack ad up there back in, when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Let's uh, let's put an attack ad against his party on the same day. Right. Or something like that, or the next day. It's the same. I think it's just as low. It's low. Um. Yeah, it says here, uh, this is, uh, G- Gillum said this on... Uh, Whoops, on MSNBC, quote, we can't recall a time where candidates for statewide office have not pulled down negative ads during hurricane season, unquote. 
Uh, oh, he also said, quote, you've got a whole region of our state where folks are fleeing for their lives, anticipating what is a life-threatening event impacting this state. I, again, would encourage my opponent to just subside with the politics. We'll have plenty enough room beyond this storm to compete between our ideas. What we need now is for the state to come together to reduce our partisanship and to focus on this important storm impacting our state, unquote. But the, the thing is, though, it, so then it becomes like this cycle of so so there so you've got these negative ads continuing to run and then Gillum says he then uses that to score political points against his opponent by saying my opponent shouldn't be running these ads you know what i mean it just becomes yep. this endless cycle now it becomes a loop they're of, feeding into each other but yeah. you know what the the irony in this is is the majority of that area is probably not seeing any of it because they have no power yeah, well, that's the power. The yeah. I mean, come on. The the polls yeah. are down. I mean, it, this this is yeah. the it, worst storm in hundred years. It almost. I I feel like they're talking talking mostly to empty air. Well, that's the thing. It almost doesn't matter in a way. I mean, on the one hand, we can say, yeah, they shouldn't be doing this. It's distasteful. But on the other hand, who's actually seen the ads anyway? Realistically, I would rather just see people concentrating on. You know, getting ready to get in there and clean things up because they can't do anything right now to help anybody. Mm -mm. They can't help anybody right now. Says uh, DeSantis's campaign referred questions about the ad to the state Republican Party, which later said it would pull the ads down. Hurricanes are one of the ultimate tests of a politician's leadership skills in Florida and, if managed right, often help them on the campaign trail because of the free media they earn that shows them in charge and rising above politics. Still, campaigns and their backers typically have not attacked rivals in counties in media markets threatened or immediately damaged by hurricanes. Striking as the most powerful hurricane to hit the panhandle in a century, like you were just saying, 100 years. Michael's eye made landfall Wednesday afternoon near Panama City, giving residents throughout the 35 counties with a disaster declaration hours of TV watching time before power began going out. And all the storm affected five of Florida's 10 media markets. And they didn't have much for warning either. So there's a lot of people that ended up trapped. Not because they chose to, but because they didn't get out in time. They should have gotten a presidential alert. Yeah, right. Wouldn't that be fun? Why wasn't there? Yeah. Was, yeah. Or maybe, do you think maybe there was a governor alert? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe those uh, automatically go out to everyone and they can't uh, just uh, do it for the people in Florida. I don't know. I don't know. They probably have their own special system all set up just because they get struck with so many hurricanes and tropical storms and things of that nature. Maybe they have a governor's alert. I know that. Uh, says who? Yes, yeah, says you. Hmm. <laughs> By the way, hello to uh, John Hopwood, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. Hoppy, where are you? Well, he comes oh, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like rabbits. Um, <laughs> oh, yes, yes. It'll be Easter in like six months, so, yeah. Yeah. Um. So... You know, it, it's not uh, too early for this, obviously. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking a lot about uh, Democrats who may potentially uh, be running for the nomination to challenge Trump. And it looks like now, I mean, we've talked about... If you say you know, it, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to get sick. Well, I'm probably not going to say who you're thinking of, but who are you thinking of? Please don't say Hillary. I think Hillary's going to run and I think she'll be the fresh new face of the Democratic Party in 2020. Oh God! No, I'm actually kidding. No, no, that's not that's not who I was going to say. But I mean, but there have been Michelle names. Obama. No, 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 no. Bernie. Well, Bernie, Ber Ber I'm pretty sure Bernie's running, and maybe so, he'll be the fresh new the face one, huh? of the uh, Democratic Party. So three strikes. I'm um, out. I'll give you a hint. It's someone very old. And Democrat. Older than Trump. Older than Trump and a Democrat. Older than Hillary. Older. Carter. Than Carter. Uh, Clinton. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, no, oh Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Carter. No, wait, that doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know Carter. Why I Couldn't Carter could do one term? <laughs> That's true. He only had one term. He could do one term. He's. he's they don't. They, he, they wouldn't be the first president in history to not have him consecutive. He's like ninety three, but he's a young ninety three. You said older. You see, you see him on TV, he's and he's still, still very. He's still very spry. He's still out there. No, I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's someone who is like legitimately a billionaire. Gates. So it's not Joe Biden. Gates. No. No. 
Uh, I, I, I give up. Michael Bloomberg. Now that doesn't surprise me. Now he's been, now Bloomberg. But he said that before right. and then he doesn't run. This happens every four years and then he doesn't run. But there has been a hint dropped that he might really be considering it this time. Uh, HuffPost says Michael Bloomberg registers as Democrat as he mulls 2020 presidential bid. Uh, Because he's been an independent for a while now. He's gone back and forth. He's been both a Democrat. He's been a Republican. He's been an independent. I honestly think they would be smarter to run Michelle. Oh, yeah. I think if they ran Michelle Obama that they'd they'd actually have a leg to stand on to possibly win. Oh, I think so, too. You run another billionaire against another billionaire and you're not going to get anywhere. It's just. I mean, you know, Michelle has more personability. She's more grounded. She's more close to the people. Yeah, but Bloomberg's a real billionaire. Like, he's he's a verifiable billionaire. Which is exactly why I don't think it would work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'd be interesting. But, he, you know, he certainly have a lot of money behind him. He's got a lot of negative out there already. Yeah. I you mean, know, there's a lot of us that don't think very highly of him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. In some regards, you know. Yeah. This, some of his political point of views are pretty, uh, shall we say, extreme. I don't even remember what uh, any of his points of view, to be honest. I just know as that as far he's... left as you can go until you fall off the flat Earth. Bloomberg, on what? Everything. Are you sure you're thinking of Bloomberg? Education, firearms. Because he's gone. I mean, he's he's gone back and forth between parties. I no, mean, he's, he's been a Republican before. No, 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 no. I don't really know. I thought he was more like a co- sort of a corporate Democrat all the, type. All the anti. Like in his world, oh. the only people who should ever have firearms are military and PD. On that, yes, that's right. Uh, in he his is... world, the only people who should educate are public school systems and not uh, private school systems or homeschool systems or charter schools or, or anything of that nature. He is. I do remember the anti-gun he's thing. He's yeah. more for state control of everything. You control nothing because you're too stupid to run your own life. Uh, Ricky Litwinkowicz. I think I got his name right on the first try. Ricky, tell me if I got that on the first try. I think you did this I time. I might have been cheating a little bit because I said it a little bit slow, but I think I, I think I got it on the first try. Um, he says in the Facebook live chat, he was a trash mayor, and if he were president, it would be a travesty. So uh, Ricky is not, uh, not see, a Bloomberg agreeing, uh, He's supporter. agreeing with me, see? That just goes to show you the negativity. Now ask people about Michelle Obama. How much negative is there about her? Oh, no one has anything bad to say about Michelle. The only thing people tried to do was go after her clothing, and that didn't work very well for them. Now, did it? Oh, Ricky says, yes, I did get his name correct. Uh, Derek Evan Relliford says, and his guards can have guns, too. Well, yes, of exactly. Course, yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. But not you. But not you, buddy. You, you don't protect. You can't protect your family. He can have armed guards because he can afford it. You're just too poor. So, you know, you and your family, it's just tough. Now, Republicans can find something negative to say about Michelle, though. They did because they were so um, the Republican reaction to the Obama presidency, especially on on conservative talk radio, was so visceral that uh, I remember at one point because Michelle didn't I don't remember her ever doing anything really controversial. And yet, well, she did some stupid stuff with educational food, uh, like lunch menus and things, and, and mo- want to have BMIs done in schools and things like well, that. Well, yeah, she that wanted to... be well, awful. Well, she, I, see, I didn't find any of that awful. She That's just, shaming. Uh, I didn't find it's it shaming. shaming. No. Oh, yeah. I did not take it as oh, fat shaming. Oh, let's have, tell children what their BMIs are and no. give them more of a complex than they already have. See, to me, that was girls. really innocuous stuff. It was just encouraging people to eat healthy, these healthy oh, eating initiatives. Oh, give me a break. Oh, yeah, and like she had a sending garden home and, a home... Cooked a homemade something because it didn't it didn't fit oh. lunch guidelines, so they replaced it with some stupid carrot stick or something rather than the the healthy protein that mom had or dad had supplied. Oh, I, I I don't know about I don't know the I've details had, of that. I've but, seen that. I mean, I've yeah. had friends go. You wouldn't believe what got sent home today. All right. So now so now you're off the Michelle Obama train already. No, I mean I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just I hey I'm not on the trains to begin with, but uh. I, I'm just saying that I think Democrats would be wiser. I'll get on the Michelle Obama train. Why not? There's, I mean, a, there's a song is so, about her. Such a, a negative. They got that. Who is it? Beyonce who does that Michelle Obama Obama song, whatever it's called. Oh, is yeah. it Beyonce? 
I think so. I mean, she'd be the first president to have had a song about her like that. And like, she'd like be the that. first I mean, female not... president, and she'd be the first female black president. So we could kill all kinds of stereotypes right there. There you go. And end them. Just boom. There done. you go. Yeah. Done. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bloomberg is, uh, let's see, he's 76. Um, he's, it says a 76 year old billionaire has switched political parties several times in the last couple decades. He had been a longtime Democrat before registering in 2001 as a Republican ahead of his first New York mayoral run in 07. While still mayor, he abandoned the Republican Party and registered as an independent. Uh, let's see, we have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed in the Afternoon. Who's this? Hey, Matt, it's Mike Doyle again. Mike Doyle, how are you, sir? Are you Good. On, hey, are, are Jen, you in, it sounds like you're more than a Republican than you think. You, you want to uh, protect yourself. You want to earn your own money and spend I, it the way I, you want. I was but a Republican. That that, I, I was just saying, you were saying a lot of things. Are, hey, well, you, I was you, responsible you for right making... After I hung up, that somebody said that what I said was false. Yeah, uh, Kevin Buckley in the Facebook live chat was uh, challenging what you were saying. Yeah, so so I pulled up the article, and all I was doing was telling you what the article said. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a scientist by any means, but the guy's name was Dr. Gerard Bond. Gerard Bond, the, uh, okay. Of the um, Columbia Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Okay. And he, you know, he's the one that, I got you the name, I can read you part of the article, but... He goes on to say the ice trends, you can just, it's pretty easy to tell. And the best that they can tell over the last 12,000 years, it's happened every 1,500 years. Okay. Um, so, so would you, it, you know, I don't know where this guy says that. Somebody he knows works there or something. I'm reading, I'm just telling you about an article that I read yeah, from, yeah. This, from this noted. You wouldn't be the first person it, it, it at all. It goes on to say in this article. That the regularly spaced layers of ice delivered debris showed that the amount of floating ice increased every thousand to three thousand years. Hence, saying that that's a cooling trend. Um, the date of the peaks of the ice delivered were 12,300, 10,8, 8,000, 5,700, 39, 2750, and 800 years ago. So if you read, the, if you do those yeah. numbers out, they all come out to like 1,200 to 1,500 years. They can tell that there's some kind of cooling trend. No, I'm gonna. And I'm the gonna, last one was 800 years ago. Yeah, I'm gonna look so for if that. If rhythm uh, kept up, we would have we we would be in a heating trend now, but we would be in a cooling trend sometime in the next uh, three or four hundred to seven hundred years. We're gonna have another cooling trend based on the last six in a row that all has happened in that time. Yeah, so when I heard you say look. somebody called up and said I'm full of shit or full oh. of sorry, full oh, of da, 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 whatever. Da, 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 da. All, I, all I wanted to tell you was I was reading an article from a guy who was a Scientologist, a noted Scientologist, and well, I hope he he's said, a Scientologist. Scientologist. So, wait a minute, did you say Scientologist? You said Scientologist. It wasn't Tom Cruise, was it? No, 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 we're just. Did I say science? Yeah, we're, you we're, did. We're, we're just yeah. busting your balls. No, yeah. I know, I know, you, I know, you, I know <laughs> yeah, you meant. I, know, I, know. I, I know you I meant just, climatologist. I was, just trying to, I was just trying to add to the. So you're telling me that the aliens did this? Some, about some, I, I'm kind of fascinated about the cycle theory, and I've been reading on it for years, and I, I read all these different guys who kind of have the same theory that it, it comes and goes and trends, and uh, they, this was one of them. And then when I hung up to have you, and I was just telling you what this article said. To have somebody call up and say, he's wrong. Well, I'm not wrong. The guy who wrote the article is wrong if he has that argument. And sure. he's a noted scientist, Dr. Gerard Band, I think was his name, from from Columbia University. So, that's yeah. All. No, yeah, so people uh, could so just there Google that, him. There is that um, theory out there. Let's put it that way. Yes, something, yes. Something to chew on. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Yep. All right. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. No, I'm hey, gonna I'm gonna look that think, up. Uh, I'm gonna look that up later because I do want to read that. I think Mike forgets all the stuff I did. Was he? Well, oh, you know what? I wanted to ask him. I forgot. He before, said I, I might be up. a Republican. I, I wanted. To I a- started the knife freedom across the country. Well, I wanted to ask him. <laughs> I think he forgot. I wasn't. Sh- I wasn't sure who he meant. You or me? I think he, no. He said me. He, he oh, did said he? he thought that I was more Republican than. Then I thought, oh, of yeah. course, I was a registered Republican, but I, I'm yeah. partied. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an independent and I'm, now. And I'm an independent, but I'm very pro-Second uh, Amendment. Yeah, this is true. This is true. But, you, yeah. but you're registered as a, as a Democrat, aren't you? 
Currently, I am, yes, because in the yeah. 2016 primary, I wanted the opportunity to vote for Vermin Supreme. And I did so <laughs> proudly, and I will do so again. You know, I'm so sad because had he had won, he had promised me not only a pony, but it would be a purple pony. Ooh. And I actually have a picture of myself with Vermin Supreme. I, I, so I, I can prove that I yeah. was promised a purple pony. I don't know if you should be able, though, to uh, choose the color. I think that's government overreach. Um, hey! John Grandall Jr. Uh, <laughs> in the Facebook live chat says, What's up from Dover, New Hampshire? Hey! What's up to you, John Grandall Jr.? Nice to hear from you all the way from Dover. Well, it's not that far. Well, it's far enough. No, I guess. It's like an hour. Yeah, eh, 40 minutes 40 minutes 45 40 minutes, minutes. What about that yeah i yeah, don't know yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a little further with we gotta uh, go traffic. out that way tomorrow yes yeah is the uh oh do i have another call do you or are you just seeing lights in no your mind? i might be yeah are you I, seeing I, lights I, in I your thought mind? I, sometimes out of the corner of my eye I'll, it's I'll, the heat i'll think it's flashing and it's then the i heat getting realize to you. it's not um so let's see. I just want to see if Bloomberg. If you're seeing things, it's anything. the heat getting to you, I think. So it says Bloomberg announced his new political affiliation in an Instagram post. Oh, he's. I, now that's nice. This, this very old man trying to be hip and young. He's using Instagram. I think that's lovely. Actually, Instagram is where you're going to find a lot of the younger folks these days. Well, that's what I mean, yes. He's trying to appeal I hear to that the that, youngins. That's more popular with them, which you, surprises me because isn't it just like pictures? Yes. So it's not like chit chatty and stuff really right right it's not like facebook it's it's all pictures yeah, that's or kind of weird based on that kind of weird um he now, didn't twitter it well he probably uh did, did that too okay. but uh he's gotta keep up with the joneses man or should i say the trumps oh we do have another call hi welcome to matt connerton unleashed in the afternoon who's this oh hi i wanted a pony too well, we all want. Promised me a pony too. But he did see what color was yours going to be? Mine was going to be yellow. See, see, Matt, hers was yellow. going to be yellow. Yeah, I don't know if uh, a yellow pony. Uh, yeah, can you even uh, do that? Yeah, that sounds unnatural to me. Let's spray it on. No, she's you can't. She's can't. getting a purple pony. Why can't I get a yellow pony? But you can't spray these ponies. PETA's not going to like the sprayed ponies. We could use the same stuff we put in, you know, our hair to color our hair. PETA says no purple ponies. I don't think so. I want a purple pony. I put my foot down. Mm. But, you know, the problem is you and I have the same problem, hon. You know, he didn't win, so we didn't get our ponies. I know. Well... There's always next time. Yes. Vermin in 2020. Yes. That's what I said. We must start a campaign. <laughs> well, he'll start his own sure campaign. He'll be around. <laughs> I Absolutely, hope so. Absolutely. I bet. I hope so. I bet. I hope so. All right. Okay. Thank well, you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. See, I told you. I told you. you want to be... believe me, you got to wait for a call to come in. It's going to be either Vermin or uh, Michelle Obama or Michael Bloomberg. So it says uh, <laughs> That's a heck of a mix, boy. <laughs> so it says so he announced his political affiliation on Instagram, warning that Democrats are, quote, so badly needed to keep the government in check. He said this, quote, at key points in U.S. history, one of the two parties has served as a bulwark against those who threaten our Constitution. Two years ago at the Democratic Convention, I warned of those threats Today, I have re-registered as a Democrat. I had been a member for most of my life because we need Democrats to provide the checks and balance our nation so badly needs, unquote. So, in other words, he, you know... He's he, a super Democrat. He he's wants always to been take a super Democrat. Trump. I mean, it, it, he, he, he started the, the Safe Towns thing, and the, he, support, he backed the Million Mommers. Yeah. I mean... I don't see how he ever fit into a Republican category. Well, he's rich. He's very, very rich. This is true. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. They'll both take anybody with money. Yeah. Well, you know, and Republican voters like a rich guy, though, because they think... Sort of Democrats. Yeah, but... Show me a Democrat elected who's not rich. But Republicans tend to, I think, buy into the idea. That's, that's one of the things they love about Trump. They they think if you're rich, it means you understand the economy. Now, uh, wait a minute. Wait though, a minute. We are talking about, the. I think, the first president. I don't know if there's ever been another one who doesn't take a salary. He donates it every quarter. Yes. 
I'm sure. So he does. let's try that one. I mean, I got to give some credit where credit's due. Oh, I guess. On that regard, yeah, yeah. at least the money's the money's not, not going in his pocket. That's true. It's going towards. Uh, he's donated to homeless stuff. He's donated to food stuff. I sound like I'm tilting the Trump horn. So you know, even a blind dog gets a bone. That's what they say, right? Well, it's not like he was counting on that money because he, you know, he literally, you, you know my he theory, ran, he, he never ran saying he, he if he, he won, he, he would never take a salary. He never expected to win. So so says you. Says who? Says me. Says you. Yeah, says You me. kept saying that all through the campaign. He's never going to win. He's not really wanting to win. He doesn't want to win. He's going to do something. He's going to back out. And you know what? Didn't happen. Oh, and I he's never, the president. I don't think I ever said he was going to back out. But no, I didn't. I don't think he expected to win. You you didn't think there was going to be that much effort either. And you right? Yeah, you kept saying yeah. it, kept saying it. But he wasn't making it. And an I effort. kept saying it can happen. He, he kept, can win. He kept going to state. Like, like I, I remember when he, like, he, that's, that's part of what goes into my theory about how, why I don't think he intended to win because he kept campaigning in states. Like, like I remember, I remember talking about it when I had the TV show, how I'm like, okay, so this week he's campaigning in Connecticut and he's got an event in Massachusetts. And it's like, what is he doing? He's not trying what, to win. Well, yeah, you say that now. But their strategy worked, and they won. I guess, yeah. Their I mean, strategy worked, and they won. I don't think they had much of a strategy. Well, actually, I think they the people around They got the delegates them- that they needed by going to key states to, to, to scoop up those delegates. Well, and for you, the nomination, yeah. The, maybe those states weren't considered... Oh, I never doubted he'd be the nominee. Weren't considered it. No, I never doubted he'd be the nominee. I I th- I, I expected no, him to win. No, I mean I just... in the I mean in the general election, in the electoral college, you know, in the in the general election, the popular vote to go to the electoral college. I think that their strategy of campaigning outside the normal, you know, train. Yeah. They 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 didn't do the normal train, and they, they went got... after the smaller. They went after the, every little small delegate, and look what uh, happened. I think they got lucky. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think so because I know one of. The, I know some of the people that worked on the campaign are pretty smart guys. I mean, Hillary did win the popular vote. Really, really smart guys. And she probably could have. I don't know. Maybe won the electoral college if she'd campaigned in some states. I think that she people took like granted. Mike Biendo and stuff knew what they were exactly what they were doing. Well, no, no, no. I I think people around him wanted him to win, and they. But I don't think Trump himself wanted to win. You say that, but you know, I think maybe in the beginning. Maybe you're I right. I don't think he ever expected to but win. Part, somewhere along that, he changed his mind. I don't know. And who knows? I think nobody really knows. No, nobody really knows what's in his, what's in his heart. What's if in his Hillary mind? If Hillary runs again, though, the Democratic Party is absolutely stupid. Oh, it's she's... Like, it would be like the Republican Party. You're stupid if you run Romney. I mean, you just get away from these people. Oh, they're not going to. No, Romney's going to be the next uh, senator from Utah. He's not going to run for president again. I don't think so. Hillary you say run. he's already run twice. What's to say he wouldn't do it a third time? If we're talking about this Hillary doing be... a third time, no, I don't think she's going to run time. again. How many times? Has but she it wouldn't. Run now? It actually wouldn't shock me. But no, I don't think. I think Biden might run again. He looks like he might run again. He's never run for president. Biden. He's run for president three times. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, you know what it is? He never wins. That's why he's just never <laughs> been. He's never been the nominee. Well, let's take yeah. a break. It is the uh, top of the hour, and it's a hot summer day. So uh, yeah, we're on October tenth. So in here's Manchester, a, New Hampshire. Here's a song appropriate for the hot weather from uh, the greatest entertainer in the history of the world. Oh no, Mr. Frisco Jones himself, Jack Wagner. Oh <laughs> yay! We'll be right back. Hotty, he was a hotty. Got nothing left for me. Ooh, running restless through the city to find my fantasy. Looked into your eyes and found it looking back at me.
I'm just saying, I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? I actually believe him on that. Hey everybody, it's hour number two, Matt Connerton Unleashed in the Afternoon. We are live on WMNH 95.3 FM, emanating from hot, a hot summer day in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. 603-250-6007 is the number to call. 603-250-6007. You can also, of course, speak your mind in the Facebook live chat uh, on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. Uh, In fact, I just saw a comment in there. Uh, Derek Evan Relliford says, are we trying to set records or save the country? Uh, Derek, of course, I believe referring to uh, the discussion earlier about, um, you know, people who run for president multiple times. So Jenny and I were talking about that uh, before we took a break. Uh, Biden, I I think, has run three times, if I'm not mistaken. That's why I said, can we have someone new? And I don't want I don't want a Bloomberg. Yeah, no, we're going to get, I mean, look, uh, Cory Booker's probably running almost certainly as well as uh, Kamala Harris. Wasn't there some talk about Paul Ryan? Uh, yeah, there, well, there is, I mean, well, you know, there's a theory about Paul Ryan that the real reason, and... the, yeah, well, yeah, he will be, yeah, there, there, there's yeah. a theory that the, his whole reason for leaving is when he when he leaves is that so he can get a little bit of distance from this administration and then come back and be the savior of the Republican Party and run for president. Um, that is a theory that's out there, which I think is a pretty good theory. I do, too. That's um, why I brought it up. Yeah. I mean, he's, he, so he's sort of new. I mean, he did run for vice president. He was Romney's running mate, but he hasn't run for uh, for president. Um, Elizabeth Warren, there's there seems is she actually after denying for so long that she had any interest in running for president, you know, somebody's asking her every five minutes if she's running. She finally sounds like she's, I think she said the other day she's going to make a decision after the midterms. Uh, so she, for once, she wasn't uh, denying it, but she's actually saying she's open to it. So Elizabeth Warren might run. Oh, God um, help us all. She's very popular. Pocahontas herself. Oh, I don't, uh, that, that, you're, come on, you're better than that. Pocahontas. Uh, uh, you know, really, they say you that don't on, they, usurp. It just oh. get out of it. Just, ugh. They, that, that's what they say about her on, that's what Trump calls her. You, I'm sorry. You don't want I, 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 <laughs> All right, some of me is still a Republican. It's uh, going to be. Apparently, yes. That's a, how <laughs> and I never liked that woman. I have <laughs> never, ever, ever liked that woman. Right now, as we speak on another station right here in Manchester, New Hampshire, Howie Carr is probably uh, saying the same thing. You don't want to be saying something they say on Howie Carr's why show. Not? Uh, because... Why can't it's I? Howie why Carr. do I have to confide to anybody's? And besides, wait till the, wait till the ratings come out. I will have oh, destroyed yes. Howie Carr of in this course. market. The ratings, the the um, imaginary. Ratings. How do I get those? I, gotta, I don't know. I've been look trying that to up. figure that out. I'm going to Google that I later. To see, I wanted to see what Peters were. Yeah. For the morning show, you know, I wanted to see what their the, their morning show ratings were, and geez, I couldn't find it. You know, where are these these amazing radio ratings? Because you know, I hear I hear I hear bad things about you, Matt. About me? Yeah. I hear that you're all about ratings. That's all you're all about. I'm all about ratings. I'm all about about ratings. ratings. That's right. Radio ratings. Peter Peter said something really intriguing on the, uh, I heard it on the replay of the morning show, something about um, he's going to be covering the uh, the broadcasting from the the, uh, Thanksgiving Day parade this year. Uh, in uh, Man- or I don't know if it's on Thanksgiving Day, but the ho- the holiday parade or whatever it's called in Manchester. I'm not a big parade guy, but um, th- I used but, to like him. But he was talking about it. But I liked it better when I got to driving him. Yeah. He was talking about it, and he said something about he might have a surprise for the parade, and I was like, hmm. what could that be? And it got my wheels turning. Maybe he is the marshal. I think he might have been talking about something else, but I don't know, no, and I don't no. want to, and I don't want to speculate about it too much because I, I don't know anything. I haven't heard anything, but I heard him make that comment, and mm, I was like, "Now you got my brain going. I, I got like, some ideas what, going. What could that be?" So anyway, mm. um, I just uh, so speaking of, of Peter's this, going to announce that he is officially going to run for mayor of Manchester. I'd vote for uh, Peter. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. 
Maybe. Maybe. Or governor. Governor of the state, maybe. In two years, because he can't do it now. It's going to announce for two years from now. Oh, right, right, yeah. It's too late. He didn't unless he did a write-in campaign. Yeah. You can do a write-in campaign and right. elect Peter. Yeah, here we go. Let's do a write-in campaign and we'll elect Peter White to take over something really important and, and run it better. Right? Well, it worked for uh, uh, Lisa Murkowski in, uh, in Alaska when she got primaried out of the Republican nomination. So she sure did. did a write-in campaign and actually pulled it off. Um, right in Peter White for anything. That's yes, <laughs> anything and everything. So I just saw I just saw this pop up on Mediaite, and this is intriguing to me. I hadn't planned on doing this, but I'm going to play this audio. Joe Scarborough has a theory now. So, well, actually, let me back up a little bit. So Nikki Haley, of course, has resigned or is resigning as uh, ambassador to the UN. And by the way, for those who are speculating, some people are speculating online about, oh, is she the one who wrote the anonymous op-ed? No, she is not the one who wrote the anonymous op-ed. Whoever wrote the op-ed works from inside the White House. Nikki Haley works out of New York because she's ambassador to the UN. Plus, you know that building with the gun in the front of it that's got the barrel all twisted up in a knot? Oh, my goodness. That one in New York. Well, I don't approve of that. I think Bloomberg paid for it. My Oh, my goodness. (laughs) But uh, plus, uh, Nikki Haley wrote her own op-ed saying that when she has something to say to the president, she says it herself when she needs to challenge the president. So, so no, Nikki Haley did not write the op-ed. But Scarborough, apparently, Joe Scarborough of Morning Joe, has a very interesting theory that involves Nikki Haley and involves Trump potentially not running in 2020. But didn't she publicly say that she was going to support him? Well, of course. That, that doesn't mean anything. The plot thickens. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Plot so thickens. I want to hear what uh, what uh, Scarborough. I'm going to play this clip. I'm really curious to hear Scarborough's theory about this. Uh, there was talk that she was going to go through the end of the year, but in a resignation letter, which was dated October 3rd, Ambassador Haley said she was proud of what she had accomplished, proud of what her team accomplished, and after quote 14 straight years of being in public service, she is looking forward to running. Uh, or uh, to, to actually returning to the private sector, I think uh, that was a Freudian slip, I suppose, <laughs> because because it sure seems like she has been, if there's been anybody that uh, the White House has been worried about running in a primary in 2020, it would be Nikki Haley. And as you look back at her service, I think she is one of the few members that has remained independent and has stuck pretty steadfast to a traditional U.S. foreign policy position. Joe, she's uh, the rare person in the uh, Trump uh, team who's managed to really keep her reputation, her dignity, her sense of independence entirely intact. We sometimes say people who get touched by Trump uh, come away uh, uh, tarnished, diminished. That hasn't been true with, with, with Nikki Haley. Uh, she has a, a good sense of timing, and you could say this is just the right moment for her to say, uh, to, uh, time for me to move on, do other things. I read this announcement yesterday as, as her campaign announcement for 2024. I don't see her running in 2020. I don't think any Republican thinks he or she really can take on Donald Trump right now. If something uh, should happen to Trump, uh, if there's some catastrophic event, legal or otherwise, she's, she's well positioned. Uh, I think the other thing to say about Nikki Haley is that uh, with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, with National Security Advisor John Bolton, there was a little more lean on her during the Rex Tillerson period when Tillerson was so reticent, to almost invisible. Nikki Haley at the U.N. was really the voice of American foreign policy publicly. That's not true now, and I'll bet that's also a factor. You know, uh, Willie, uh, there, there was... Uh, there always has been talk about Nikki Haley uh, running, possibly running in 2020. David's talking about 2024. If my theory holds, Donald Trump won't seek re-election. And this way, she's not lining up behind Mike Pence. She's getting out in front of everything. And if, if you get out before the midterm elections, which could possibly go pretty badly, well, then that stain's not on you. You were already on your way out. Yeah, she's 46 years old. She's got a lot of road ahead of her. Now she's got two years of foreign policy experience that she can talk about if she ever does decide to run for higher office. And Susan, you were writing about this last week before we had any idea that Nikki Haley was was going to leave, that she should, she, you say, should jump in in 2020. 
I think it more like Joe says is a safety valve, maybe if President Trump something comes up in the Russia investigation, for some reason he does not run again, she could be there. But she's not going to primary Donald Trump, right? Um, I probably not, but I think she should be ready to. We look at Donald Trump's numbers. He's always around four, hovering around 40 percent. And if the Democrats take back the House, as we expected, there's going to be an awful lot of investigations. We're going to see more on his taxes. Uh, or- All right. There's a little bit more to the clip, but um, you get the point. But she's talking about, well, it's possible that she might primary Trump. No, that's absolutely not going to happen. I don't um, think so. I think that it's a possibility of her running if Trump does not seek re-election. But wouldn't it be interesting to see Haley versus Michelle? Oh, well, I think that'd be a heck of a camp. Uh, both campaigns would be having to work really hard. Uh, I think yeah, I don't know, though, I I, think. because you've got on the one hand, you've got Nikki Haley with all this experience and Michelle Obama, who's uh, never held public office that I know of. But she's a lawyer. She's got experience in other areas. And, and right. she was the, the floatist, you know, so she's very like she's got, got likability and all of that. And so does Nikki Haley. So if you're going to run a Nikki Haley, who are you going to run against her as as a Democrat? If you're smart, you're not going to run a Bloomberg. You run a Bloomberg against Nikki Haley, Nikki gets it hands down in my vote. Yeah, she's certainly much younger than uh, Bloomberg. She has more appeal. She appeals to the younger to younger people. And as they said in, in what you played, she's more mainstream and not an extremist. Yeah. Um, so... I want to kind of shift gears because it is uh, Halloween month. I have a, uh, a harrowing tale. Uh-oh. Uh, I found this on HuffPost. There's nothing political. It's just like uh, oh. kind of makes you go, uh, wow, how did this happen? Uh, and this is not from The Onion. This is uh, 100% real. Uh, man stabbed at haunted house after knife mistaken for prop. Oops. Uh, The victim said he and his friends had been chased with fake chainsaws and other prop weapons before being handed the knife. (laughs) Wow. I mean, it's like, how does this happen? Because they're dummies. Apparently, yes. You don't even put anything real like that near something like that. Yeah. Jeez, have a brain. Yeah. It says a man looking for a scare at a haunted house got one that he'll likely never forget when he was stabbed with a knife that was mistaken for a prop, according to police. The man, James Yoakum, 29, said the real-life horror story began when he and his friends were approached by a costumed character at the Nashville Nightmare in Madison, Tennessee, on Friday night, according to a police report obtained by HuffPost. <clears throat> Excuse me. The man wearing skull face makeup and a straw hat, Yakum told police, offered his friend a knife uh, after asking her if Yoakum was, uh, quote, blanking around with her uh yokum uh, told the tennessee and quote keep in mind we'd been chased by chainsaws holding other weapons all kinds of stuff all night and it was all fake unquote playing along his friend identified by metropolitan nashville police as uh, tanya greenfield also age 29 told the man yes yokum was bothering her uh well here stab him the costume man Uh, allegedly replied, handing her the blade, which Greenfield uh, told police she thought was a prop. Yoakum said, quote, so she stabs at me with it and everything got really black, unquote. (laughs) Yoakum, who told police, uh, who who police said uh, was stabbed in his forearm, said he doesn't remember too much after that, though he does remember his friend bawling and the costume man apologizing and saying that he didn't realize the knife was that sharp? Oh, you <laughs> God. Really? You can't even make this up. I, I, I knew it was real, but I didn't know it was sharp. Of course not. I feel so foolish. Uh, the man in costume was not identified in the police report, and it's not clear whether he will face charges. He's probably going to need some psychological assistance because, I, I mean... Most people would be horrified at that. Yeah. Just saying, I at mean. At the very least, we can question his judgment. I, uh, well, I mean, who handed it? You know, there's going to be, oh, God, I can't even. You can't even make this up. Are you sure it's not an onion story? No, but it, it oh God. did happen in Tennessee. 
Well, uh, this is, well, I mean, that go well, no, I'm not going to say that because I have mm. good, fr- I do have some good friends in Tennessee that are very good people. Well, I hope none you of them are, uh, Jane. I hope none of them are ever uh, accidentally stabbed. Well, Jane would most likely take care of that before they got near her with a knife. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Yoakum was rushed to the TriStar Skyline Hospital in Madison, where he got nine stitches in his arm, the Tennessean reported. Yoakum reached by phone on Wednesday, told HuffPost that he is out of the hospital, but is still obviously in a lot of pain. He declined further comment as he seeks legal advice. Representatives for Nashville Nightmare, in an emailed statement to HuffPost, uh, said... Uh, it is uh, continuing to investigate what happened and that an employee suspected of being involved in the stabbing has been placed on leave. It's probably smart. You think? Uh, Nashville Good. Nightmare said, quote, we have robust safety and security protocols in place, including metal, uh, metal detectors and on-site medical and security staffs. We are going over all of our safety protocols with all of our staff again as the safety and security of all of our patrons is always our main concern. We have not been contacted by the police, but we will cooperate fully with any official investigation, unquote. The representatives declined further comment. Because they don't have a leg to stand on. They're doomed. Right. They're going to get sued for big money. They might as well start saving it now. (laughs) Yes. Did did you hear um, hear that Greece was... uh, Wanting to lift the burden on its donkeys? No. Not an onion story. Not an onion story. Greece has apparently passed a law um, banning overweight tourists from riding the animals on the popular island of Santori. uh, Or Santoni? Santoni? So now Greece is fat shaming. Stop it. Well. No. Aren't they? Well, no, because... You said Michelle Obama well, now, was minute, fat shaming for encouraging children to eat it, healthy. Ex- saying something and actually showing something are two different things. Mm. The country's doing this because they're wanting to protect the animals um, after activists have complained that the donkeys are receiving spinal injuries mm. um, from sightseers who often pay to ride the donkeys up the steep slopes from the shore to the island's main town. But transporting heavier travelers has taken its toll on the creatures and popped anger from campaigning groups. So now people wishing to ride the donkeys will have to weigh less than 100 kilos or 220 pounds or one-fifth of the donkey's body weight. And it, the story goes on. But I don't think that's sh- shaming. I think that's um, animal activism. No. Isn't that convenient? Yeah. See, right. my, my, my Greek uh, cousins are, are taking care of their animals. Yes. I was really surprised to find that out. Imagine what? that I'm Greek. Oh, right. Well. I'm Greek. I'm Italian. No. Well, there you go. <laughs> All um, kinds of things. So uh, I, I occasionally uh, like to, uh, you know, I, I find these on my favorite website, rightwingwatch.org. Uh, one of my favorite characters uh, that I find on there is this uh, gentleman, Mark Taylor, who's a uh, you know a right wing uh, conspiracy theorist and and broadcaster. Uh, he calls himself the firefighter prophet. And what's interesting about Mark Taylor is he comes up with these theories that are sort of um, when he comes up with his conspiracy theories, uh, instead of just going with with sort of the baseline, you know, the Illuminati controls the weather or. Uh, hurricanes are sent by God the because he's mad order. at gay people or whatever. He comes up with really creative uh, amalgams of different like bits and pieces of conspiracy theories and kind of uh, mushes them together. So uh, his newest one here, and I'm going to play the audio uh, in a second. Uh, he says that uh, chemtrails caused California wildfires as preemptive punishment for electing Republicans. So uh, this is one of his more uh, creative theories. And uh, he's on this, uh, well, it says here, so he was on, on, uh, this was during a recent appearance on Chris McDonald's The Mick Files program, you know, because his name is McDonald. Um, He claimed that wildfires that scorched California recently were linked to chemtrails and were intentionally caused in order to preemptively, preemptively retaliate against the voters for electing Republicans in the upcoming midterm elections. So it's the Democrats behind it trying to punish Republicans uh, through uh, through chemtrails. Very, very interesting. Uh, let's listen 
Uh, and uh, I know it might sound ridiculous to some of you, but uh, yeah. maybe he'll say something here that'll uh, make us all think. And and as I like to say, it's kind of a standing rule on the show, let's try to listen, uh, not only with open minds, but with open hearts. Says who? Well, we're going to find know, out. Talking about the California here we go. A few weeks ago, um, and me being a firefighter, you know, these, these guys were, uh, California's got probably some of the most experienced brush firefighters in the world. He is the firefighter prophet, so he's kind of an expert on this. World. Oh, and God. These guys were saying that these, these fires were exploding, and they couldn't control them. Wow. And for those guys to use that kind of language, they said they weren't even trying to stop it at the time. They were just trying to get people out of the way. And there's a reason why that's happening, brother. And it's because, again, uh, I, I encourage people, look up Dane Wigington and, uh, you know, go to his website. There's enough information and proof on there. He's talked about this guy before, and I just love his name, Dane Wigington. What a great name. I wish I had a fun <laughs> name like Wigington. That'd be great. Uh, I'm going to change my name to Matt Connington Wigington. Connington has kind of got a similar ring. Oh, nothing, nothing's got a ring like Wigington. That's a great, a little roll that's a off the tongue. great name. But <laughs> I'd also change my first name. I'd want it. I'd want some alliteration there, so I'd be like William Wigington or something. Wolf? That would be How fun. About Wolf? Wolf Wigington. That's uh, that, that'd be great. He actually one of his forty-six minute videos. He verified four, like three or four different things that the Lord had been showing me. But the fires, the reason these fires are so hot out there right now and so great right now when these things burn is because they're not fighting a class A fire, which is wood and paper products. They're fighting a class D fire, a metal fire. And why is that? Is because they're spraying the atmosphere with the chemtrails with aluminum oxide. Aluminum burns at 1,200 degrees. The, the foliage is saturated with this stuff. And when it burns, you're not going to stop it. And this is the reason why. They've weaponized, again, trying to the depopulation, trying to make people sick, and trying to kill people off. This is their way of retaliating because um, I, I believe California's fixing to go red, brother. I believe that too, Mark. I do. And that there's an all-out assault on for California, Florida, and Texas. Watch for stuff happening in these three states because there's an all-out assault going on. Because when those, if if California goes red, hang it up, they're done. All right, California there you go. Red. So it all makes sense. On what planet? It all makes sense. On what planet? I was skeptical at first, but he tied it all together with the stuff and the chemtrails and the fire and the metal and the, I mean, it all, it all makes sense. So in other words, the gov- they're lying when they say that a fire was started by a careless cigarette or, or something or a lightning strike well, or something going chemtrails. on. Chemtrails. Yes. It's chemtrails. It's metal. The chem- metal trees. The trees are covered in metal and that's why the fire, the fi- that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. The, well, tree, the trees in the ground are covered in metal, and that's why the fires won't go out. The liberals put the metal there, so they, the, you know, the chemtrails well, could no, start the I mean, fires. Um, aren't, well, wait a minute. Aren't Republicans in control of the Air Force? What so, do you mean? Wouldn't that mean that they were the ones doing this? Somebody, uh, somebody, maybe it was the Illuminati, somebody put the metal there to uh, punish Republicans preemptively. Take that as a warning. Don't you dare go red, California. Now, I'm curious. Hmm. Have you ever been blackout drunk? Have you? Why, well, I, I asked you a question. Have Answer you? A question. Answer a question. Have Answer you? A question. Well, I, apparently there's a British couple that did. I like beer. Have you? <laughs> Actually, um, not a big fan of beer, to tell you the truth. But I, I got to tell you, I just came across this story. Check this out. Um, a British couple went to Sri Lanka for their honeymoon. How about a beer? And they had one too many of those. And they got so drunk, they bought the hotel they were staying in. Wow, that's pretty drunk. All How right. about a beer? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've made impulsive choices before, but uh, that's, a, that's something else. So Gina Lyons, 33, and Mark Lee, 35, from London, might have had a bit too much rum when they made the... Oh, see, it was rum, not beer. When they made a decision to buy a small beachfront spot in Sri Lanka during the three-week bank backpacking trip in December of 2017, actually, the couple hit it off with some of the staff members at the rustic location and on their first night there. Then they drank about 12 glasses of rum. Then they found out that the lease was almost up on the hotel, and they agreed to take it over for three years with a cost of about $39,576. Um, 
After finding out that that would be the equivalent of $13,200 a year, uh, they thought it would be a brilliant idea to buy it because they were just that drunk. Wow. They thought that was just brilliant. Oh, it's only thirteen two. Mm. Yes, we shall buy it. So they did. Uh, <laughs> and apparently the agreement and everything's not even in English so or um, in a language they can read it, so they had to have friends translate the agreement for them. <laughs> wow. I, you can't even make... This is not an Onion story, people. This is off of Fox News. You wouldn't catch uh, Trump making a business decision that way. Well, I've never had alcohol. See? Yeah, but he's actually telling the truth. I'm just saying, I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. I drank beer with my friends. Sometimes I had too many beers. I liked beer. I still like beer. Had beers, have some beers. One beer, drink beer, <laughs> drinks beer, drank beer, and drinking beer. You've probably <laughs> had beer, Senator. Beach Week Ralph Club biggest contributor. You know, I got a Aww. weak stomach, whether it's with beer. I like you beer. For that. I like I'll beer. I don't know if you, know. Okay. you like beer, Senator. Um, what do you like to drink? Next one. Hanging out and having some beers with friends, which I gladly do and which I fully embrace. How about a beer? I, I, I will say that the couple has said that they insist their next big decision will be made sober. (laughs) Well, I'm glad they learned something. It's a teachable moment. Well, actually, apparently they've done like eight grand in renovations and they're trying to turn it into a B and B and and make money. Oh, they're making a go of it. That's yeah, good. Good for so, them. Yeah, but th- that's a heck of a purchase. To make. Imagine yeah. waking up and going, "You bought a what?" <laughs> uh, they're they're trying to see the the rum glass is half full. I guess apparently twelve of them were very full and they were all empty. Wow. <laughs> well, twelve glass. I can't even imagine. Oh God. Ew. Yeah. Ill. Oh, Kevin Buckley in the Facebook live chat says, uh, I was in the car and couldn't respond to Mr. Doyle. Uh, I did not mean to say he was full of it, but that he was uh, misinterpreting the science. Indeed, the climate is a constant and predictable change. We should be in a period of slow change as we moderate toward the cooling trend. Instead, the rate of change is increasing by an alarming rate. If you plot the rate of predicted change to the rate of actual change, then plot the difference to the amount of carbon we have been putting into the atmosphere, there is a very significant correlation between them. Okay, that, now that makes sense to me because my understanding is that, yes, the, the uh, for, just from what I've read, and again, I'm not a scientist, but from what I've read that, yes, the, the planet does go through these changes, but that we've accelerated the warming with everything that we put. I mean, how could we not with all that... Because if you think about it this way, never in human history, obviously, um, you know, beginning with the Industrial Revolution, never in human history have we been putting so much carbon out into the atmosphere and then it comes back and it uh, and it affects the climate. So I I think that's what what Kevin's uh, point is, uh, if I have that correctly. And again, I'm I'm, I'm not good at science. Basically, they're essentially agreeing with one another, but one is saying that well, the other that that humans are speeding it up, and the other is saying no, it's going at regular pace. But they're both saying similar. Well, that but that's a pretty big distinction because my, because it seems like Mike Doyle is saying no, this is normal, don't worry about it. Whereas Kevin is saying, whereas Kevin is saying, no, worry about it because we're speeding up the warming at an alarming I, rate, which is what well, that re- that report during... that came out what was was talking about that we've True. only got ten years to 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 reverse this trend or we're screwed. But I don't know. I mean, I wasn't around when the ice age happened, so I don't know how cold it got. I know that everything like froze over and stuff, and a lot of species like died out and things and, mm-hmm. and stuff. So I kind of wonder, you know, if we if we had an I obviously nobody argues that there wasn't an ice age. So can there not be a tropical age, or hasn't there been tropical ages? Of course they have. Look at you know archaeological evidence has shown that in many areas that are desert like now, they used to be ocean, or they used to have a riverbed. Well, that's not, you know, that's that's not reassuring. No, I'm just they used to be totally covered. That certain mountains show 
how they were, uh, show glacier cutting activity on certain mountains where there are no glaciers now. There is no ocean now. But that's what happened then during the Ice Age. I mean, that's I don't want an Ice Age either. So, but it happens. The planet changes. How much do we affect that change? It's debatable. It's debatable, well, but if we want to really reverse cla- it, why don't we just stop planting a ton of trees and, and plants uh, and, and get oxygen back in the air? And- the, the thing is, my perception is it's really not that debatable among the world's climatologists who, like, something like 98% of them say, hey, we got a problem here. You know what I mean? The only country I know that encourages people to plant trees is Israel, and they, and they encourage you to do that in honor of, of someone else. Mm. Well, you know, you plant a tree around here, people accuse you of being a hippie. Who, like who wants that? I want, to, I want to plant more than trees. I, I tried to plant a tree once, and, and somebody... I uh, did plant a tree once, somebody and then in a, it died. Somebody in a big truck uh, polluting the air drove by me and said, Hey, why don't you uh, go hug some trees, you hippie? And I felt humiliated. I think that that's absolutely terrible of you to say. I made that up. I think, not, I think a lot that. of conservatives like to plant trees, too. None of, none of that actually happened. I think, I, think you're, I think you're full of it. Maybe I am. Did you, uh, a really gross thing I heard about today was on t- um, go, uh, this morning on the Today Show. You know, the morning Today Show? Yes. There was a father in Indiana who posted um, a video and pictures, and it showed that there was mold floating in a glass that he had poured out for his child of Capri Sun. It was one of those pouches. Mm. And the company itself has actually admitted it and said that the mold came from a puncture in the package. So I mean, warning to all you parents out there, if you're getting those juicy bags, check for punctures and things. And uh, I don't know, maybe pour it into a glass before you let your kid have it so you can see what it looks like. Because hearing that makes me think that sticking that straw in that pulse you can't see through might be a bad idea right now. That's kind of scary. I mean... Maybe juicy bags aren't the way to go. How about a beer? Should we give kids beers? We're probably not supposed to. I don't think that'd be a good idea. I've never been... hydrating to them, you know? I've never been a parent, so I don't know what the rules are. I am. I really think it's a bad idea. All right. I mean, if you say so. I I, I have to say it's a bad idea. We'll have to ask the uh, people's mayor, Glenn R.J. Willette. Hey, look who came to visit. He might have some thoughts on this. uh, He may. Yes. He may. I wonder if he has any thoughts on the um, Capri Sun poisoning uh, mold found in Indiana. Mm. How about a beer? He and, might. And tr- swatching out, uh, instead of giving children Capri Sun, we give them beers. Because Kavanaugh loves beer, so, you know, we must give beer to children. And he is a so Supreme Court justice. Who wants to give beer to children? Matt does, instead of Capri Sun, because Capri Sun's got poison in it now. So I With think the, the, well, Matt, so, well, you well, should... Well, one did. This, I should clarify... I don't want to get in trouble. I should clarify. This father found real gross mold floating in his child's Capri Sun drink. And the company admitted to it, saying that it was caused by a small puncture in the packaging that was aired on the Today Show this morning. Wow, that's gross. So I I was suggesting that people should pour them into a glass so you can see it before you give it to your child. Or just buy juice in a bottle and put that in a glass instead because it's you know it's cheaper. Just you know maybe convenience isn't a good idea. You I was are right uh, because those pouches are not see throughs. I was just spitballing. I'm not saying we should give children beer. Yeah, I you mean, did. I was just I was just Matt, throwing shame it out on there. You. Maybe you totally did. Maybe we give them wine. I don't know. I mean, uh, it, well that's not any better. Well, that, that, don't they do that in France? And uh, you actually, know, well, we we have some wine. Beer no, no, and, not beer children. And, how old are you talking about? Beer and oh. wine are given to kids. Well, like two or three. I yeah. don't know. No, I I don't oh, think that that young. Oh, please. You're going to give a two-year-old beer? Well, I don't know. I, I, I told you, I don't you have any kids. Foolish. I don't know. I haven't. It's not like I sit around reading books on parenting. Foolish. It's all, it's all stuck in his head. I mean, you really right. you have to have kids to figure out that a two-year-old shouldn't have beer or That's wine. That's right. Or gin. How about a beer? Or rum. You might, and... <laughs> you might buy a hotel in Sri Lanka. <laughs> no. You Glenn, missed that. Glenn wasn't here for you that. You missed that, Glenn. I there, did, huh? There was a couple that went on their honeymoon to Sri Lanka, and they got too drunk, and they literally bought the hotel they were staying in. No they, lie. They must have had good, good amount of money then. Apparently, 13 to a year is a really great price. Wow. For three years, I think it was. Glenn's getting a phone call. <laughs> Glenn is an important and Again powerful man. Again with the phone? He's, he's very... He does this all very, the uh, time. Who comes on the radio, radio and talks on the to, phone? Yeah. And well, then tells him, I'm on the radio. Well, it's it's important. <laughs> what? He's uh, Who does that? He does. 
He's the people. I know. I thought you were going to pick me up at six. We don't have to do <laughs> I thought seven. he was he's the people's the, mayor, but he's going to be mayor. Africa's mayor soon. That's right. Yes. That's right. All right. And I'm going to do his wedding. We're getting a call. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed in the Afternoon. Who's this? Ridley again. Dave Ridley hey. of the Ridley Report. Hey, Dave. By the way, uh, you know how you've, um, you've been talking about uh, Channel 9 and how they've, uh, they've excluded libertarians from the televised debates? Um, I call them. Uh, I call them New Hampshire's government licensed TV station. Yes, yes. Uh, WMUR. They uh, th- there's a similar situation going on in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a story on Reason. dot com. I mean, I won't get into it, but uh, apparently this is happening there too. It says uh, Pennsylvania's Libertarian Senate candidate candidate gets invited, then snubbed from uh, a televised debate. So uh, it, it's really? not, not just happening here. That's so wrong. I agree. Well, yeah. at least he didn't get arrested you know like the one in louisiana did what they, they arrested him they arrested him for uh cryptocurrency related violations really and That's stupid yeah about a year ago and uh they also arrested um well they arrested roger veer when he ran for candidate for uh some candidacy like libertarian candidacy and they call this america <laughs> they call it that uh, Ver, Ver is a famous Bitcoin billionaire now, but he lives, he escapes to Japan. Uh-huh. Is, is that the guy that uh, that does Overstock dot com or something like that? No, I think he might promote them some, but his thing he runs Bitcoin dot com, okay. and his, I guess the thing he's best known for in New Hampshire is he showed up at Pork Fest about ten years ago. Well, I guess it's twenty twelve, and just handed out bitcoins randomly, and they they had physical bitcoins back in those days. Oh wow! Hmm. Pretty fancy. Were they made of silver, gold, or what? Do you know? Well, they, they had a gold color, and I think they might have been metal. They're not gold, but they were Fake worth, metal. I guess, about three three dollars when he handed them out. And now wow. each of those is worth about seven thousand dollars. Oh wow! Oh, I wish you would have gotten one, huh? I know, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah, but then you maybe got arrested for cryptocurrency violations. So I don't know. You got to be careful with that one. Yes. Yeah. So what's going on? Ridley, what's up? What's on the Ridley Report going on? Well, I was calling to update you about more bad news, I'm afraid. Uh, Rich Paul has been arrested. Do you know him? <laughs> haven't heard that name in a while. I haven't but heard yes. that name in a long time, but yeah. yeah. I, I, that's the uh, cannabis activist, right? He's mostly a cannabis yeah. activist. He's best known for leading those big civil disobedience events in downtown Keene around 2009. Oh, oh yeah, that he annoyed guy. the yes. crap out of me when I was trying to get medical passed. Mm. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I begged him, begged him, begged him to not do a smoking event while we were trying to do medicinal marijuana mm. for like the third time that I was on it. And uh, it, yeah, that didn't work. He did it anyway. So he's been uh, arrested? Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 is he arrested yeah, for better, cannabis? Better a bird, bird in the hand than two in the bush. Is he, why is why he, was he arrested? He was arrested uh, for allegedly having a machete in his vehicle, oh. which is lawful, uh, not only for you and me, but also for him. It but is they lawful. They arrested him for having it because he had a felony related to these, mar- these marijuana A uh, felony? Ah, no, 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 Dave. You're telling an untruth there. Felons cannot be in possession of any Weapons. any Weapons. knives, any knives, any bow and arrows, any, any swords, mm. anything like that. Yeah. The federal My understanding law. is that in this case, this implement is not in violation of New Hampshire Absolutely law. Absolutely not true. You know, we, we may find out more. We may find out more in court. Not true, because federal law trumps it and says that a felon cannot be in possession of a deadly weapon. In other words, mm. a felon he he can't walk into a gun store and buy a gun, can he? No. Correct. So, in other words, he, he cannot can, be well, in possession of any deadly partially, weapon. Partially correct. No. He can't. I believe. He, he I cannot. believe felons are allowed to own. Uh, guns if they're old enough, like 19th century guns. Does that make sense? Uh, the collectibles that are unfiring, that you can't fire, maybe. Um, mm. If you can't fire I think it. You can, I think you can be able to fire them, but they have but to no, be he black powder ha- or something. He cannot have a deadly weapon in his possession as a felon. And that includes a pocket knife. And the pair of scissors? Um, if you're using it in the wrong way. I mean, if you're cutting around a pair of scissors with a sewing basket, that's one thing. But if you're trying yeah. to attack somebody with it, then know. it's the a deadly machete, weapon. The machete, it can be considered mm. a gardening tool. So I think there's 
definitely room, room at least for interpretation there. I think you're going to have an uphill battle on proving a machete as a as a gardening tool. What if, if it was a sickle, you might have a leg to stand on. What if you have a pair of scissors with a sewing basket full of cannabis? That's probably in... The cannabis probably will hurt more than it helps. Oh, okay. It would have to be below three-fourths of a... Of a uh, what do they call that? Well, I'm just of thinking a, uh, ounce in order to be legal or not legal, but not be criminalized. He'd get a he'd get a ticket. Well, I'm just thinking if you're smoking all that cannabis, you're that much less likely to do something violent with the scissors. You would think. Mm. <laughs> you would think. I mean, well, be, I let, think this is a, a reminder, Jen, of how helpful you have been over the years, and the fact that you. Uh-huh did loosen up the knife laws quite a bit, at least for normal people, Actually, their there, knife laws are basically gone. Yes, there are no life laws in the, in the state of New Hampshire. You can own, possess. Um, actually, we were we were uh, an amazing state in that um, the American Knife and Tool Institute did a lot of work with me, and I was really proud. Of, I, thank you for bringing that up. Um, we actually made American history in that not once but twice we passed unanimously through the House, the Senate, and signed by, at the time, Governor John Lynch in the law, um, not only legalization of all knives of any kind, but preemptive law that keeps any municipality, which killed some, there, there were some municipality laws out there that people didn't know about, having to do with blade lengths and things like that, um, that people could actually get in trouble for and not even know it. Because if you don't know your local town, then you don't know, right? You yeah, plus, trouble, so you we, we it, there, that. There, I like to say there's a list, 200,000 pages long of things you're not allowed to do in a free country, <laughs> right? Well, yeah. That's I true. Mean, that, that's where I have a problem, because now there are so many laws, and the law says that ignorance of the law is not excuse of breaking the law. However, not even how could you possibly crunch all the laws and remember them all as a human being and not... I bet you yeah. we break a law every day and don't even realize oh, it. Oh, of course. There's been books written about that. Um, Dave, we're going to – I hate to cut this short, but uh, on Wednesdays we do have another live show coming up after us, so we kind of scoot out of here a few minutes early. Uh, but uh, please uh, give the Ridley Report a plug before we let you go. Ridley Report, Ridley Report, something, 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 something. Ridley, Ridley Report. report. Uh, dot com. I, I hope at some point you've got like a remix or something. That would be awesome, like an extended I just remix. Them. That was like a little bit. Well, different. that's that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a little different. That's true. Way to do it. All right, Dave Ridley. Thank you so much for the call, my friend. Yeah, thank you for the compliment too. All right, take care. Bye bye. Yeah, we made national history twice. It's never been done to our knowledge. Oh, to our knowledge, and that was done when the Republican Party was in the minority for the freedom of owning. And for the preemption, it was done while the Republicans were in the majority, and they were both done bipartisan. Well, that's worth uh, celebrating. How about a beer? It is. I don't really drink beer. But it's one of the few times you hear about things being done bipartisanly. That is true. That is very true. So that is a positive. Absolutely. Well, we are about out of time, so we're going to scoot. Uh, Glenn R.J. Willett, the people's mayor, had to leave uh, suddenly. He had to uh, you know, he had to do the people's business. He's an important and powerful man. He's but, still uh, that campaign in Africa, too. That's right, yes. But uh, coming up at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. live uh, right here on WMNH 95.3 is, of course, just in time for sports. So we're going to go ahead and start to get out of here. But, of course, if you missed any part of today's show, it will be up in just a few minutes at WMNHradio.org. And uh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you, uh, Glenn, for stopping in. Uh, thank you, Mike Doyle, for calling. And, and everybody uh, else who called in. Thank you, Daniel, uh, for, for, my, for giving me a safe drive. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, that's it for the young now. young lady and her yellow pony. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about her. And uh, that's it for now. I'll talk at you all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. IPMNation.com.